the only advice I have is for artists uh, is to carve a time of your own where you can paint, uh, you know, like I, I do with my watercolors. I think this social distancing will have a huge impact on artists, especially artists who are used to collaborating, people who work in theater, people who work in dance, uh, people who work in big studios with uh, assistants. I don't have assistants. I do everything on my table. One box of watercolors, so the only thing that makes it difficult is I cannot foresee when these works will be seen. Other than that, you know, my life has not changed. I work eight, nine hours a day. On land, short aphoristic bursts in infinite regress. At sea, let the mermaids flirt with me. This poem is by George Seferis. It is part of his collection, Logbook One, and it's translated by Edmund Keeley and Philip Sherard. I never met Seferis, but I did meet, on two occasions, both translators. Seferis has a huge role in my choice to live in Athens. I went probably the first time because I had read his poetry. I'm going to read now for you Matthias Pascalis, Among the Roses. I've been smoking steadily all morning. If I stop, the roses will embrace me. They'll choke me with thorns and fallen petals. They grow crookedly, each with the same rose color. They gaze, expecting to see someone go by. No one goes by. Behind the smoke of my pipe, I watch them scentless on their weary stems. In the other life, a woman said to me, you can touch this hand and this rose is yours. It's yours, you can take it now or later, whenever you like. I go down the steps smoking still and the roses follow me down, excited and in the manner there's something of that voice at the root of a cry. There, where one starts shouting, mother, or help, or the small white cries of love. It's a small white garden full of roses, a few square yards descending with me as I go down the steps without the sky. And her aunt would say to her, Antigone, you forgot your exercises today. At your age, I never wore corsets, not in my time. Her aunt was a pitiful creature, veins in relief, wrinkles all around her ears, a nose ready to die. But her words were always full of prudence. One day, I saw her touching Antigone's breast like a small child stealing an apple. Is it possible that I'll meet the old woman now as I go down? She said to me as I left, who knows when we'll meet again? And then I read of her death in all newspapers, of Antigone's marriage and the marriage of Antigone's daughter without the steps coming to an end of my tobacco which leaves on my lips the taste of a haunted ship with a mermaid crucified to the wheel while she was still beautiful. Mm -hmm.